everybody. Thank you for joining me. This is Liz Wright from sunny Cape Town, South Africa. And today I have my cup of ginger tea. Because my tummy is not feeling happy. And I'm going to be sharing with you some ideas for using eyeshadow in your adult colouring. So I'll show you first of all all the materials I have. And then on a piece of paper, I'm going to show you how I use them. And then I will implement them in a coloring book a little bit. I won't do a whole picture, just to show you the general idea. So because they're dusty and a little bit messy, I have a packet of baby wipes. Any baby wipes are fine. Then I have two sets of eyeshadow. Any eyeshadow palette that you get... Um, you can use for your coloring but I would just like to make certain that you understand that if you use the eyeshadow for your coloring not to use the same shadow again on your eyes for fear of infection we need to take great care of our eyes and definitely having put pieces of cotton wool and putting them onto paper and using our hands with them bacteria can get into them and we don't want to land up with a nasty eye infection. You can get all sorts of the most incredible eyeshadow palettes. I don't often use it in my adult colouring. I tend to forget about it. And so I don't have a lot of palettes. But I keep thinking of going to one of the cheapest stores here and buying a palette. I've seen on Amazon. So if you live in the States it's worth looking into i'll put a link below there's some lovely sets for about eleven dollars or just under ten dollars with close on 120 colors which is quite incredible if you think that um even an inexpensive thing of color pencils of 120 would cost you probably the minimum the least good pencils would cost you about $40 so it would give you a lot of extra color options so I'll put a link to those that I've seen on Amazon I buy in South Africa so prices are different for me so I just go to our inexpensive stores and I've picked up these two palettes you can see they're very similar colors these are always the colors that call my name excuse me I'm just having a sip so without further ado, we've got our color palettes. Then we have cotton wool, just from cotton balls, good to have on hand. You don't have to have all these things. You can see how I'm using them. Eye makeup eyeshadow applicators. These again, pick up for a song. These I do find very useful eyeshadow wedges get i'll put links to all of these things just to aid you if you decide oh i want to try that and i want to try that and i don't feel like searching i've spent quite a lot of time looking for things that i think are worthwhile so i'll put links to them and you're welcome to follow those they will be affiliate links but they won't cost you any extra then these things called finger daubers uh, I saw a gorgeous set that I have in my wish list on Amazon that has about 12 of them in a little case, which I think is awesome because then you can keep them with specific colors for specific colors because, as you can see, I've used this one and it gets dirty. <laughs> so it's nice to kind of keep one per color, as it were. And then some more inexpensive makeup sponges then i also have and sometimes use these little baubles which you get in different sizes i buy them at our south african equivalent of a dollar store for use in crafts and things and i sometimes use them for applying color so whatever as i say watch and see what suits you then uh color pencil blender my very favorite is the derwent pencil blender and perhaps a paintbrush you may not want a paintbrush an inexpensive paintbrush preferably slightly harder or even a makeup brush 
and this thing which is quite interesting and it's a bracelet mate it's a jewelry helper and it's basically the cheapest one on amazon and it's got it's made of wood and they stick this crocodile clip into the wood so now i'll show you different ways of applying the eyeshadow so the first one I'm going to start with is if you were going to be doing a large background. So for this, I'm going to be using my very dirty and used makeup wedge. So I'm going to use a green here and I just put it in the makeup. So you can either dab it or I swipe it. And then for large areas, you fill the area in like that so for instance I'll show you using this in a in a coloring book a little bit later then you'll see there's a little bit of with the sponge not so much but you sometimes get dust don't wipe that with your hand either use an old makeup brush same as you would use for your pencil shavings or something else that I'll show you just now when there's a lot of dust. So that's number one. If with the sponge you're doing a background and you wish to blend two colors, um, I'm going to take another, I have this dirty mix of colors here. So with the green, I want to use a blue and blend them together. So I'm going to use my blue and I'm going to put that into here. Then I've just taken, loaded this with some color and simply rub it into the green and then go over again with some green to get a smooth blend and over with the blue until you've done what you want, got your blending going. So that is very easy and it's a great way of coloring and covering large areas. So especially if you want to do a large background. Now you've covered a large background and you get to somebody, there's flowers. Oops, now you see I'm online and so I can't draw. Let me try again. Look at my natty little gift I got given as a birthday present from one of my pupils. It's a desktop vacuum cleaner. All my pencil shavings gone. Isn't that wonderful? Absolutely love that. So let me do another leaf. So now you've got your big makeup wedge and you're going along but you're getting close and pretend there's that it's intricate and difficult to get close by then you can either use a paint brush which is a little bit awkward This one's a bit damp. Sorry, I'm just going to use a dry brush. You can sort of paint it on with a paint brush. Not bad. And you can get quite close to the edges. Or you can use this little thing that I really love. So you take a piece of cotton wool. This is the bracelet mate. Take a piece of cotton wool, you pull just a little bit off, you roll it into a kind of a longish ball. Then I have a vessel of water so you can dip your finger into the water and just damp down the cotton wool. You could even just, which I should have done because I've now got dust on my fingers, you could even just use your baby wipe make sure your fingers are clean before you start a new one and that's damped your finger down a bit 
make your cotton ball and then I'm going to take this one out so I can show you and then you open the crocodile clip boom and you this is quite big I can even use less cotton wool here break it in half and make a little cotton ball and wedge it down and then make sure you haven't got too many bits of fluff so dampen your finger again and just I'm going to put my finger in water dampen that down so it's nice and then you can pop this into your eyeshadow and it goes beautifully along the very small edges next to where you want to go. So you fill in the edges and then if you are unhappy with any of that, so I'm going to just go along the outside again, that cotton wool was still a little bit damp. We're going to let that dry. Then you can take your eraser and clean the rest of it out. And get rid of the dust. So the other thing you can do with this is to use it wet. So I've seen people doing this. I've not done it myself in adult coloring books. I would only do it on sort of thickish paper. But so you wet your brush in your vessel of water and then you simply apply it like that. And it will dry to a powder and then it's not so messy. Make sure to clean your brush afterwards. So you do need to have a piece of paper towel just for cleaning your brush. Okay, so now, so the, oh, the same thing, these big cotton balls, um, where did I put them out? That you can buy the little craft balls. You can just, you could either put them in your crocodile clip which makes it easy to apply. They leave quite a lot of dust. And then you can use your handy little vacuum cleaner and wipe it all up. <laughs> okay, so I hope that explains to you how to use them. Now I'm going to do a little coloring in my, whoopsie, Chibi Girls by Coco Wire. Move some of these things out of the way and use some of these tools. I can't use all of them in the one thing, but I think that that image is the same as this. Never mind, I'm going to color it and just do it differently. So, I think I'm going to start doing the background. And to do that, I'm going to use blue. And I'm going to use my wedge, which of course, oh, there we are. The other thing you can do with makeup, so I'm just going to do the top because otherwise we'll probably be forever. Other thing you can do with eyeshadow 
Oh no, the, sorry, I'm talking nonsense because I'm concentrating. The other thing you need with eyeshadow is a fixative for when you've finished. All right, so now we've done, I hope you can see, we've done the top edge. I want the darker, the outside corners to be a bit darker. So I'm going to use, I'm using the same makeup wedge on the darker blue and just putting that in that corner there and a bit down the edge. And I think I'll do it along the top and over that corner. And then on a spare piece of paper towel or paper, this is spare watercolor, just wipe your wedge off a, quite a lot if you want to clean it, because I want to go to the lighter blue now. I don't want too much of this on here. You can see how much you can get off there. I'm going to take this lighter turquoise blue and blend that in. So I'm going a bit over the one that I did and coming in. There we are. And now I'm going to use my bit of cotton wool that I prepared. Oh, that's the wrong bit. Just clean my fingers first. Let me get a clean bit of cotton wool. This is very important to remember to clean your fingers. Ouch, I pinched myself. There we are. And I'm going to take this here and go close to the edges. I'm going to go in these little pieces here because they are more difficult to get to. The kind of, you can use a non-perfumed hairspray as a fixative. Um, I use Krylon matte workable fixative so that I can go in and work on top of it again if I want to do something more. Oopsie, sorry. little this is one from some chalk pastels some pebbles chalk pastels that I got but you can get the same thing as the bracelet mate which is wooden this is a little plastic one and the the piece of cotton wool keeps popping out Whereas the bracelet mate doesn't so much. Now I have a lot of dust here, so I'm just going to vacuum it up so that it doesn't smudge. You don't have to have the vacuum, a little brush works just as well. And I want to blend those two together a bit more. So I'm going to use my one of these little balls here. Oopsie dropping them and just blend them together nicely. I think that's very smooth. All right, now another idea you could use a makeup I just want to put these out of the way. Your little makeup applicator for little areas. I find these, let's do lilac flowers. I find these makeup applicators don't always leave as smooth a lay down as 
the cotton wool over here it is looking quite smooth these are new applicators I bought so I'm just going there so see how quick it is to <laughs> compare it with pencil and then you can always use color pencil on top to detail a bit to make your picture more exciting so now i would like to add a bit of shading there so i'm going so why i bought this one i like the next shade up i like the fact that you could shade there we are and i'm going to use my derwent blender pencil just to blend those all together and work it into the tooth of the paper a little bit and also work it up to the edges Look, that's quite pretty and then I would probably use a little cotton ball for this tiny just making sure my fingers are clean for this tiny inner part of the flower so I'm just folding it and putting it in there and then damping my finger you could also dampen your finger with saliva but I think that's going to bring bacteria into your eyeshadow and it's probably always better to be hygienic especially these days we're all so conscious of hygiene and taking care of things and I'm going into this dark color I'm just going to do that in the center there we are might as well do the other centers while I have it on my cotton ball. Just one more. There we are. And then I'm going to use my pencil blender here again to work it in. You do need to clean your pencil blender between applications. I didn't here but I was going from a light color to a dark but otherwise it will make the next color wrong so I'm going to just scribble that also off on this piece of paper and get rid of the dust and then I feel like this needs a bit more color. Excuse my arm going over the under the camera. So I've just gone into the darker color, mixing these two together. This is quite pigmented um, eyeshadow. And now going into the darker one with some shading. And using the blender to bring it out a bit. Get rid of the dust and then you can use your color pencils over that if you want to so I think I'm going to try some detailing with this and just do follow these lines that the artist has given us And 
and go around the center to give some depth there how quick was that how awesome all right so now get rid of the pencil dust next thing that i wanted to show you is even doing her face with some cotton wool in the crocodile clip and how smoothly it comes out I think this is again too much cotton wool. You need very little. So. I have quite a nice colour here for Caucasian skin. I think this sort of peachy colour. So I'm going to apply that. If you do go over the lines, like for instance, that's a very small area there, then you can just use your eraser to correct an error. You'll notice that with this one, a little um, blob of makeup came with the last, when I loaded my piece of cotton wool. So I'm just going to sort of mash around it and spread it out. If it's a big hard blob, then just use your brush to get rid of it or your little vacuum cleaner if you also have a cute little vacuum cleaner. I'm totally delighted with this. It's one of my singing pupils that gave it to me as a birthday come Christmas present. I <laughs> thought it was so thoughtful. So I just want to get rid of the dust here. which allows us to see how this is looking. And I think I'm going to give her a bit of pinker cheeks. So I'm just going to add that here and here. Obviously, if you have more colors, you can do lots more. But I think that will be quite cute there. And then I need to make sure this is clean. Some rough paper here. Then just to blend this all in. And it ends up, I think, looking smoother than if I'd done it with colour pencil. But if you want to fix up any bits with your colour pencils, you can just do that on top of this add your stickles or whatever you want to do. So I'll finish that off screen. So one more thing I wanted to show you, one more tool, is using these finger daubers. I really like them. This is a new set I bought myself. I use these for all kinds of things. Um, so I'm going to be using the same colors. I think I'm on screen here. And you just, you can either hold it or you can stick your finger into it, which I quite like. And then you either dot it or I like to rub on the, the eyeshadow and just like the sponge makeup things it gives a lovely smooth lay down so Peggy specifically asked me to go into detail with this makeup she sent me an email and asked for that and 
she's a very valued subscriber so Peggy I personally really hope that this is helpful to you and if and that I've answered questions you may have had if there's anything more you want to know about this please don't hesitate to ask I'm only too happy to try and help and if any of you have something that you would specifically like me to try and explain or share with you so this is now blending with a darker color just going over that and in the corners and just along the edges I always find that if you darken the edges and the corners it sort of makes it look nice so I'm going over the whole lot again here and then just to go inside we're going to need our cotton wool again if I can find the right color I used oh another thing you can use if you don't feel like buying yourself one of these little makeup uh, um, helper bracelet helper things is just a cotton swab a um what you call them in america q-tips i think you call them um i had the other makeup in my hand oh there we are just amazes me how things disappear so you again just rub it on i find these i have a bit of arthritis in my hand so i find these harder to use and more expensive because you go through quite a few of them but they are perfect if if your fingers are happy to use them you can also with these end up with getting not having such a good control of how much color you're laying down so you're getting those blobs but to make sure to, to even it all out again take your pencil blender and just work it in and spread it around a bit but I definitely prefer using my little crocodile clip and the piece of cotton wool to do these finer bits To me it lays down, I don't know what it is, if it's that the cotton ball is a bit softer or what it is, but it's just easier for me personally. There's nothing wrong with the other. I think we've just about finished this video just want to finish all the leaves here the corner of the leaves and then where was my finger dalba that I used there we oh that one is too dark. I want to then use a new one for the lighter color. And just to blend these in, I'll go on the very light and at the edge of that, pull it into the dark blue. And work it until you're happy in my darker color again over the top there and the lighter color so so here is my favorite fixative this is a Grumbacher one 
I really like it. As you can see, it says workable fixative and it's matte. This is my favorite one to use. You do need to use it in a well ventilated area so that you don't breathe in the fumes and you do need to keep it away from children. So I hope this video has been helpful to you and please don't hesitate to ask me if there are any questions and if there's anything else you'd like me to do. Bye-bye now. Have a wonderful and colourful week.